Hello dear students welcome back again to Chinmoy's YouTube channel so in the previous episode we have already discussed about the animal classification basis of classification so now we are going to discuss each and every topic with the characteristics and how they are different from each other phylum so let us start with today's episode if you have not yet gone through the previous episode please go through it where i have already discussed about the basis of a classification so it will be easier for you to learn uh, this lesson when i am starting with animal kingdom with each phylum and with each characteristics and examples so let us start with today's episode now what are the learning objectives of today's lesson now first we are going to discuss about the group invertebrate so i have discussed in the previous episode that kingdom animalia is divided into two groups that is namely group invertebrata and phylum chordata so today we are dividing this into further different phylum we are going to discuss about phylum porifera cilentrata or which is uh, commonly called nidaria then comes platyhelminthes which is called the flatworms next nematoda which is called the ashtelminthes or the roundworms so we are going to discuss about these four main um, four main parts of the animal kingdom to in today's episode and if you want to learn more about this you are going to uh, see the next video also where i am posting the four next part that is annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata so the last four episodes i'll be posting in the next episode so for that one you need to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned so that you can get all the uh, updates which i am posting twice or thrice a week so stay tuned stay updated so let us start with today's episode now first we are starting with this phylum porifera so first we are going to tell the characteristics which are based on the basis of classification then i'll move on with the other characteristics also so first we have divided this uh, in the previous video i have told you that on the basis of five things we are dividing this classifying this animals into several phylum so first is the level of organization so what is the level of organization now these um, cells they are multicellular organisms these porifera their cells are not organized to form tissues okay they are, they are at the cellular level of organization they are not at all organized to form tissues okay so next comes the level of symmetry they are all asymmetric that is from which way whichever way you divide they are not going to have equal parts equal they are not divided in their body is not divided into equal division so they are asymmetric then comes diploblastic now when you are talking about the germinal i have a uh, germinal layer i have already spoken about the three layers that is ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so three layers when they are present in a phylum that is triploblastic when only two layers are present that is diploblastic so here phylum porifera is diploblastic and so it is having only two layers that is it is having only ectoderm and it is having endoderm so it is we are call, calling that it is diploblastic having only two germinal layers so this germinal layer and all i have discussed in the previous video please go through it i am putting the link above where you will get to know that how uh, through the basis of classification we are dividing this kingdom animalia into different sub phylums is it clear dear students so please go through the previous video now silom on the basis of silom we can tell that silom is absent in this phylum porifera next comes the notochord so what is notochord we have already spoken in the previous video please refer to that that notochord is absent in this uh, phylum porifera now as uh, we can say that this organisms in this group they are not having they are, they do not possess notochord so they are called all non chordata or they are invertebrata they are not having notochord so they are they are called non chordata or invertebrata so we are all studying this invertebrata category now so they are all falling on the non chordata or invertebrata is it clear dear students now we are moving with the different other characteristics which are also there apart from this uh, five characters which are differentiating this from the other uh, other phylum uh, organisms okay now this as the name suggests phylum porifera porifera which means that organisms with pores so these are the organisms which are having pores they include sponges 
Now most sponges they are marine, so that is they are found in ocean, and although some are found in fresh water such as lakes also, but mostly they are found in ocean, so marine water. Now sponges either they live singly or they live in colonies, so either they are grouped together or they are staying single in as a single form. Now as the name suggests, they are having many many pores. So as they are having many pores, these pores are called ostia. Now canals and chambers through which the water flows is called the canal system. So they are having many pores in their bodies. So when I am uh, giving you the examples with diagrams in the next slide, you will see body is having many pores. So this pores, what they do? They help in the movement of water flow through those pores, and this is forming a canal system. Okay, this is forming a canal system. Now body possesses a single opening. One single opening is there. That is called the osculum. so which is at the upper end for the entry and exit of water so that is the osculum which is present at the upper end for the entry and the exit of water now body encloses a large cavity which is called spongocele so this large cavity is called spongocele so these are the new terms students you are learning in 9th standard in 7th also you have studied this classification both plant and animal but it was not with so many uh, difficult uh, words and all so you should know this words and write it and learn it so what is spongocele body encloses a large cavity which is called spongocele now body cover is covered with a large hard outer skeleton it is having a outer skeleton now sponges they reproduce asexually by budding and gemmule formation is also there in the sponges and they are sexually reproducing through the process of fertilization so they are sexually reproducing through the process of fertilization they have a great regenerating capacity so what is the meaning of this regenerating capacity that is uh, they keep on producing too fast so their rate of regeneration is uh, too fast so they have a great regenerating capacity now most sponges they give off toxic or poisonous substances so why they give off poisonous substances their body is giving off poisonous substances to fight off certain enemies and to poison them so they are giving off toxic substances to poison them and they use this to fight off their enemies is it clear now we will take few examples of this group porifera now here we see few examples of porifera that is cycon u spongia and spongilla so you can see this these are all porous so cycon u spongia and spongilla all are porous and having so many pores or tubes or canals inside them which is helping to form the canal system and they are spongy in nature due to the presence of so many pores and canals and we can say that as they are their, their flow of water is uh, through the canal system water is flowing through it and which is uh, bringing food and oxygen throughout the body of this and then it is passed out through that osculum so just go through the previous slide learn the characteristics read them and then again come to this slide to see uh, how the examples relate to the characters now when you are relating the examples to the characters with the characters you see the diagrams it is a, it is very easier for you to learn those characteristics okay so you can see pores you can see the canal system you can see how uh, the water is flowing through these uh, organisms so these are the three main examples of this porifera now we are moving on to the next category that is cilentrata or it's called nidaria also here comes the second phylum that is phylum cilentrata so it is also commonly called nidaria dear students so when we are talking about the basis of classification again first we will take the level of cellular organization so these are all multicellular with tissue level organization so nidaria the previous one porifera was having cellular level organization but here nidaria is having tissue level organization now what is how they are symmetrical that is radially symmetrical so radially symmetrical i have already told in the previous slide uh, in the previous episode where i have discussed about this uh, types of symmetry so what is radial symmetrical radial symmetrical means that from wherever you cut this uh, nidaria these uh, animals they are uh, having they are dividing their body into two equal halves so from any part of the body if you divide the animal the body is divided into two equal halves that is radially symmetrical so from whichever plane you are cutting it will be equal halves 
so that is called radially symmetrical body now on again uh, when we are taking about the germinal layer they are diploblastic that is having two layers ectoderm as well as endoderm so only two layers are present in nidaria also now psyllium is absent and notochord always as they are all inter invertebrate so notochord is also absent in these animals so nidaria these are the five main characters which are depending on the basis of classification other than this also we are having many many important characteristics so we are going to discuss them now first when we are seeing this nidaria group the the main example here we will take of hydra so what this hydra they may be seen with the naked eyes okay and uh, uh, we can see hydra with naked eyes and can be attached to stones or aquatic plants we can see them they are being attached to stones or aquatic plants mostly they live in fresh water so they are living in fresh water mainly and body has no head and no segmentation so no segmentation and no head is present in this hydra the mouth is surrounded by a ring of tentacles they are having a ring of tentacles what are tentacles we all know that tentacles are like thread like structures which are present now in hydra when i am showing you the picture in the next slide you will see that the mouth part is surrounded with a, a ring of tentacles it is surrounded by a ring of tentacles or thread like structures now the body has a gut that is called that cilenteron the body has a gut called cilenteron and with a single opening for food waste and waste material food and waste material they are having a single uh, opening only so that they they can either live in colonies like corals they live in groups or they live in colonies and like hydra they are living a solitary life so what is the meaning of solitary life they are living a life alone so they don't want to stay in colonies they want to stay alone so uh, corals are staying in colonies whereas hydra is staying alone now these animals have two germ layers i have already told in the previous slide that is ectoderm and endoderm but one layer of body epidermis and the other layer makes the inner lining of the body which is called the gastrodermis so both the layers which is forming a uh, inner layer which is called the gastrodermis and there is a jelly like substance that in between them that is called mesoglea so these are all new terms dear students you should or you should all uh, go through this new terms you should learn them so what is uh the jelly like substance that is called mesoglea so for this jelly like substance present in these substances or organisms they are um, having jelly uh, like body texture because of the presence of this jelly like substance or mesoglea so when we are taking the examples you will see hydra jellyfish they are all jelly like so so the the texture of their body is jelly like so for that mesoglea presence only they are like that now reproduction may be asexually and uh, sexually in both ways they can reproduce and alteration of generation is actually present so what is this alteration of generation means this means that uh, sexual and asexual reproduction they keep on taking alternatively in different phases of their life cycle so might be they, uh, they just uh, one part is sexual reproduction and then other part is asexual reproduction so that keeps on uh, taking in phases in their different parts of their life cycle so is it clear these are other characteristics of this nidaria apart from those five characteristics which were based on the uh, basis of classification in the previous slide now we will go with the examples of this class nidaria here first one is hydra we can see the first example which is having you can see ectoderm the outer layer the endoderm the middle layer and inner inner mesoglea so this one is the jelly like substance mesoglea which makes it uh, jelly like in nature so this one is jellyfish we all know the nature of jellyfish it, it's a jelly like substance floating in water marine animals like that here also sea anemone you see the structure it is also a jelly like substance okay uh, if when you touch it it will feel like a jelly so these are all the three main examples of class nidaria now we are moving on to the next uh, phylum okay now here i forgot to tell you one fact that hydra it is a cilenterate and it's ha it has a great regenerating capacity so that is what how many pieces you cut hydra into it will each piece will grow into a new hydra so how many pieces you are cutting this hydra into small pieces this organism will grow into a new hydra so that is what it is uh, it is actually the regenerating capacity of hydra 
okay so how many well how many ever parts you cut into it it will grow into a new piece of hydra now we will move on to the next class that is platyhelminthes now platyhelminthes again we are dividing uh, on the basis of classification five main important characteristics we are going to tell the first one is the level of organization so platyhelminthes it's having a complex uh, level of organization that is it is having organ level of uh, organization okay symmetry is bilaterally symmetrical so what does this means bilaterally symmetrical bilaterally symmetrical means through one plane only if you are dividing this it will be divided into same equal halves so through like radially symmetrical through whichever plane we are dividing it will be divided into two equal parts but here through one plane only if we are dividing any one plane it will be dividing it into two equal parts that is bilaterally symmetrical they are having dorso ventrally flattened body and elongated now germinal layer this one is the first of all triploblastic animals so they are having ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so three parts that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm three layers in the germinal layer is present so they are called the first triploblastic so ectoderm endoderm mesoderm so three layers are present so it is called triploblastic now psyllium is absent and notochord is absent so other than this also we are having many characters so let us focus on that now platyhelminthes as the name suggests platy means flat and helminth means warm so these are also called flat worms okay so platy means flat and helminth means warm so they possess a mouth but no anus so no anus is found only a mouth is found so they are either free living that is they are planarians so they are free living in water and soil but most of them are parasitic so what does this term mean mean you know that they are parasitic means they are living inside the body of the host so they are living inside the body of other organisms such as liver flukes liver flukes are examples of platyhelminthes they were they are uh, staying inside the body of other organisms such as cow and all so they are uh, some are more mainly free living so they are planarians and reproduction it, it takes place mostly sexually but few can reproduce asexually also so mostly it is taking place sexually but they can reproduce asexually as well so they are mostly hermaphrodites so hermaphrodites what does that mean hermaphrodites is a term which means that both the sex organs are present in the same body so in the liver flukes both the sex organs are present like both male and female they are having in the same body so that is not in different uh, liver flukes that different body uh, that carry the different uh, male or female it's like in the same body both the female and the male sex organs are present so now we will see the uh, main examples of this platyhelminthes now first we have seen tapeworm so tapeworm is a flat kind of worm we can see now this uh, this tapeworm it is mainly uh, present in our intestine and it's causing diseases tapeworm so it it sticks to the intestinal wall that is it is uh, staying in the human intestinal system it's acting as a parasite liver fluke liver fluke is also present in the uh, intestine of a cow or bovine so uh, this is also a parasite uh this is also this is planaria so this planaria it stays uh, it's a free living organism it doesn't uh, want a host to live so this is planaria or a free living organisms but these two are all uh, parasitic in nature so they are depending on the other host for their well being or for their living um, surviving okay so now we are moving on to the last group of today's episode that is the nematoda Now here comes the last phylum of today's episode that is nematoda it is also called aschelminthes and they are the round worms okay now on the basis of uh, on the basis of classification we have again uh, divided the characteristics so first comes the level of organization so no real organs are present in this uh, uh, nematoda group they are bilaterally symmetrical body and that is unsegmented the germinal layers are triploblastic that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm is present no true psyllium is up present in this uh, uh, nematoda group and notochord is absent as these are all invertebrates notochord will be absent in this now apart from this we are having many other characteristics also we will move on to that now nematoda as the name suggests nema it means thread and helminth means worms 
So these are all parasitic worms causing diseases like elephantiasis caused by the filarial worms. Okay, these are this filarial worms are Wucheraria that is a type of nematoda and the intestinal disorders that are caused in human beings also due to round worms or pin worms. Okay, so that is also under this category of nematoda. So they have a definite digestive system and that runs along the length of the body. So their digestive system runs throughout the length of their full body. They have mouth, they have pharynx, they have intestine and they have anus. Now sexes are separate in male and uh, the females uh, are smaller than females. So male, uh, this nematoda group males are smaller than females of this group. So male body will always be smaller than compared to that of a female. We will take the example in the next slide and we will discuss that how uh, visible characters of male, they are smaller or shorter than the females. Now they have slender elongated bodies tapering at each end. So bodies are slender elongated which are tapering at each end of the body. Both the ends are tapering and the middle part is little bit round and fat. So let us move on to the example part. Now here are the two examples of the group uh, nematoda. So the first one is Ascaris. You can see that the both the ends are tapering and the structure of the male body is smaller than the female one. So a female is bigger than the male one as you have discussed in the previous one. And you can see the ends are tapering and the middle part of the body it's actually fatter or more rounder than the end parts. Now the second one is the Wucheraria bancrofti which is causing elephantiasis in humans. So if uh, when you are going to study about the health and hygiene lesson there you will study about the elephantiasis disease that is filaria when the legs of a human being becomes uh, uh, as the foot of an elephant. So that is caused generally uh, due to mosquito bite and this nematoda which, uh, which we are studying now Wucheraria bancrofti it is the causative agent of that disease or elephantiasis. So disease or illness when we are studying we will be studying this Ucheraria bancrofti which is a nematoda. So these are the main two examples of nematoda group. So this is all as of now in today's episode we have studied about the four phylums and in the coming video we are going to study about the four another in the non quadrata group another four phylum we are going to study about that that is Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca and Echinodermata. The last four uh, phylums of this non quadrata or invertebrate group. Okay, so then we are going to start about the vertebrates. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel so that you can get to know all about the coming topics which I will be teaching you for 9th biology. So if you are following my channel, you will get to know how systematically I am teaching each and every lesson to you. So thank you as of today. Today's lesson is done. Please go through it. Please go through your book, whichever you are following. If you are having any comments, any doubts, any queries, write in my comment box so that I can clear up your doubt in the next episode. Thank you.